microbes basically run our planet. And even though we normally can't see them, they're essential for all life on Earth. Microbes can basically harvest any uh, chemical reaction that provides energy, making them the greatest chemist on Earth. They also engineer our planet and make it what it is today. And we still have to learn a lot about how they do it and why they do it. We couldn't live without microbes. So, so if we really want to understand how our planet functions, we have to study them. We have been here on board, utilizing for the first time an underwater laboratory, which means that we can do our sampling and our experiments actually in situ, and so kind of at hundreds of meters of depth. This means we are both working at both temperature and pressure that the microbial community normally lives at, but most importantly for the region here, is yeah, they are under them, those low or no oxygen conditions. Throughout our oceans, there's like a million microbes per milliliter of water. That's a lot of microbes, and those microbes are carrying out really important processes that have um, a huge impact on a planetary scale when you think of the volume of the ocean overall. So it's really important to understand what those microbes are doing. Those microbes in the surface ocean are contributing to um, the oxygen that we breathe in the atmosphere, and in oxygen minimum zones, they're also um, carrying out really important processes and producing different gases that interact with the atmosphere. And in order to know exactly what they're doing, we have to look at microbes almost on an individual scale. Oxygen minimum zones are really important for ocean productivity. And we have not really understood yet how like microbial processes function there, and especially how that may lead to greenhouse gas emissions. And as these oxygen minimum zones are predicted to expand due to global warming and ocean deoxygenation, it's really important that we understand how these oxygen minimum zones are actually functioning. Yeah, the hard work is gonna start once we leave the ship and we're gonna get back to the lab and we're gonna take our samples and we're gonna extract DNA and RNA from them. We're gonna sequence them and that's where the fun begins. That's when we start to dig into their genomes and to look at what genes they encode, um, what they're actually doing in the water. All of us here on board, we play an important role, the crew, all scientists from the young researcher to the experienced PI. And it's important to train the next generation to continue and further develop the technologies that we're using here and also the experiments that we're designing. Utilizing novel oxygen sensing technology on board this cruise has enabled us to identify oxygen dynamics that we have previously overlooked simply because we didn't have the detection limit and so we haven't been able to identify these small amounts of oxygen coming in and out of the system. Tiny amount of oxygen is just everywhere, right? That's why you need to do everything in situ. It's uh, very challenging to fully estimate how much information we gather. Uh, but for reference, one ml of, of seawater. So uh, like the seawater that fits in a cube of, of one centimeter contains roughly one terabyte of, of genomic information. Okay, we have gathered a tremendous amount of information that we'll be, we'll be using for the next years and it will be uh, accessible to the rest of the community to use to answer their questions as well. The novel oxygen sensing technology and underwater laboratories that we have been utilizing on board this vessel will allow us to kind of potentially open a new era in the future for oxygen minimum zone research and as we understand then how these microbes are living and functioning under these low oxygen levels, we can potentially start to, you know, reconceptualize our understanding of oxygen minimum zones.